Hello, Grace. My name is Reggie Scales. Uh, I was born and, and grew up in the United, southern United States in the 1960s, surrounded and loved by my parents, aunts and uncles, my family. My story is an American story. I, I started the Civil War. My, my great-grandfather, Joe, was born a slave. He died before I was born, but my grandfather told me many stories about him. And in the 20th century, my grandfather told me about his personal experiences after serving in World War I, World War I, he came home and just the, the indignities he suffered, uh, you know, serving after serving his country, he was not able to find a job. So he went to West Virginia and became a coal miner, eventually moving back to North Carolina. I mean, called to preach the gospel, meeting my grandmother, establishing a farm and raising 15 children. Uh, I have relatives that have served in every major conflict uh, in the United States since World War II, some of them carrying tremendous physical and emotional scars as a result. So my parents, you know, they relate to me stories of living in the Jim Crow South, how the separate but equal doctrine meant you know, colored schools and outdated textbooks and materials, uh, not having the right to vote, how my grandmother died of cancer because the closest colored hospital they could treat her, her condition was in, in, in Richmond, and how they believe they, that the hospital experimented on her body after she died without the family's permission, uh, how my mother's stepfather was found murdered after associating with a group of white men the night before, and there was no investigation then, nor is there today. And so, and frankly, the indignities were, were far too many to count. In 1970, uh, I was old enough to enter elementary school, three years after the desegregation in my local school district, and as I entered the school, there was so much that I knew and so much that I didn't know about the environment I grew up in. I remember, I grew up in kind of this insular environment of, 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 of family, all African Americans. And my experience in K-12 and even through college was the exact opposite. And as I moved through middle school and high school and started to see subtle and less subtle actions of my peers directly related to, ra related to race. And so I went on to Appalachian State University where I began to experience life in its truest form, not only from the challenges of a young man, but trying to figure it out as an African American man. And I worked hard, and doors started to open for me, and I became the first African-American student manager of the, of the student union, and the first African-American to graduate with a degree in community and regional planning. After graduation, the first part of my career I spent in government, and I held three positions in the public sector over a 12-year span. With each position, I was the first African-American male to hold a director-level position. I joined the private sector in 2000. And since then, I've worked for three engineering firms. The, the first firm, I was the first uh, African-American vice president uh, of the company's North Carolina operations. Second firm, first African-American company principal and board member. And in my current, uh, current position, I'm the first African-American managing director for the company. And so I've served on numerous boards and commissions uh, as the first African-American. Currently, I'm in the Kerry Rotary Club. I'm the Kerry Rotary Club Foundation Board President. And also a member of the Appalachian State University uh, College of Arts and Sciences Advancement Council. So, sounds pretty good. Good 30-plus year career, but there have been it's been a tremendous adventure. Uh, sometimes a roller coaster, sometimes just a beautiful spring day. You learn to live with and question cultural differences, isolation, microaggression, being passed over for promotions. Issues that, you know, uniquely African Americans certainly understand. But the primary mechanism in, uh, for me dealing with this has been my faith. Romans 8, 1, 2. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, uh, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. That's my go-to scripture for a number of different reasons, because you see, as I move through life, I begin to understand the blessings of my upbringing. And my parents, Joe and Mary Scales, set the tone. High expectations and standards. Aunts and uncles provided guidance and advice. And my, my grandparents provided that agape love that I so needed as a child. They, they truly were and, and, and still are my North Star. So I learned that excellence should be incorporated into everything that you do. Failure is our greatest teacher. Growing up on a farm, I learned that success does not happen without first planting, preparing the field, fertilizing the crop, removing weeds, harvesting at the right time. We've got to be opportunistic. And then and I've used that throughout my professional career. Because you see, CNN, Fox News, or the latest web blog tells me nothing about who I am as an African American. That wisdom came from my family and, by extension, through God. So my story is truly an American story. You see, my family has invested blood, sweat, and tears in the development of this country. That gives me a really wonderful sense of pride. 
But the lessons of my life is that if you don't prepare and understand who you are, being able to fight the battles with the full armor of Jesus Christ, then you are no good to anyone, uh, whether it be race, whether it be a conflict with your spouse, parent, child, or sibling, or your employer. So parents, uh, nurture and protect your children, for it is you where they learn their value and their worth. And to children, honor your parents. They are the wellspring of wisdom and will prepare you for the many challenges and the blessings that await you in life.